Hello everyone, my name is Roya and today I'm coming to you with the books that I read in the first half of May. Um, I'm filming this a little bit early, it's only the 11th right now, um, because I read so many gosh darn books in the first half of May. So, and I know I'm not gonna read quite this many uh, n in the next half of the month, so I figured this would be a good time and also it's the weekend so I had time to sit down and film. But anyway, so uh, first book I have here to talk about is To a Darker Shore. Um, this was sent to me by Colored Pages Book Tour. So thank you so much to Colored Pages Book Tours for sending this my way. Uh, this is about a girl who is fat and autistic and she lives in a fantasy world that is uh, reminiscent of kind of ancient Greece and Greek mythology. Uh, the enemy deity that is going to kill them all um, demands, you know, sacrifices in the form of a child or a teenager every, uh, every season. So in order to keep them away and to keep their island nice and safe and happy, they have to sacrifice somebody four times a year. She tries to make herself useful by being an inventor and being really good at that. Um, and so one of her inventions goes horribly wrong and her friend covers for her because he is nobility and he is super unlikely to get sacrifice. That basically never happens. But unfortunately he does um, because he covered for her. So she basically has to go and get him back and defeat the monster and all of that. And things are just not what they seem in this world. There, Things are definitely um, being hidden from the society and the main character figures it out and all of that. It's really good. I really enjoy enjoyed reading this and I would definitely really recommend it. Elder Lore by Amanda Foody. Uh, this is about a boy who uh, basically gets chosen by an animal or a mythical being um, to basically do something and he spends the entire book trying to uh, get rid of that to not be that and not and get rid of his like chosen you know the the thing um, that marks him as a chosen person by this mythical being all of that um, and of course we all you know that's basically the the, the the only issue I had with this book, um, being that it's a middle grade book and everything, I'm not really going to dock at points for anything else. It's just that there's not a whole lot of actual conflict in it. Uh, basically, the vast majority of this book revolves around him trying to get out of what uh, he is expected of him. And that's basically the whole thing. And we know, we know that eventually he's going to be like, okay, cool, I'm embracing the situation. Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. This is an Arthurian retelling by uh, from uh, Elaine perspective. I loved it. Um, I loved that the women were all really badass in this um, and I really enjoyed reading it. Ruin Song. I was not a fan of this, unfortunately. I really wanted to like this book, but it, I, it was just not for me. Um, I thought the concept was really interesting, which is why I read it. It's basically uh, the magical ability in this book is using, you know, singing and using your voice to like kill people or heal people or whatever the deal is. And um, so I felt like this book was a little bit bland. And then there were also a lot of... Uh, animals being killed, mostly off page. Um, it's, I mean, the killing is all done off page or described or, or like it said that it was, it happened, blah, blah, blah. Um, but there is one particularly sad scene where um, the main character comes home to find her dog like brutally killed and everything. Um, so, uh, so we don't see the dog being killed, but we see him having been killed. Um, and then what I didn't, and so I, I just generally, you know, I prefer not to read books that, um, have animals being killed in them. Um, it's just something that if I already know that that's in the book, I will not read the book, that type of thing. So I wish I had known, but unfortunately you can't know for like every book, you know? And the main issue I had with that was honestly not even just that. It's the fact that later in the book, you know, um, after she's discovered that her dog was murdered and all of that, um, she feels bad for being upset that her dog was murdered when her friend slash love interest is imprisoned. Um... And so I'm like, like, she feels like, oh, well now, you know, it's kind of like trivializing the, the dog's death. And I'm kind of like, dude, like your dog being murdered is not less bad than your friend possibly being executed soon. Like a dog is not lesser than, you know, a human life. Like we're all equal. So I just don't really like, I just don't really appreciate it when a narrative kind of trivializes what happens to an animal versus a human, all of that, uh, because it 
is all the same, basically. Tempest and Slaughter by Tamora Pierce. Uh, this uh, is a newer series following, it's it's like a prequel series following an older, um, a, a character from an older series of hers, but in the past, basically. So, um, so this was really, really good. Um, I really enjoyed this. Um, it is kind of funny, though, that Tamora Pierce has such a formula. Um, I don't know what it is. It's just, it's not a bad thing. It's just funny to me that I've been reading her books since I was like 10 and still to this day this book came out just a few years ago like maybe five six years ago something like that um and it's just funny to me that it reads so similarly in terms of like does she use the same exact outline every time and it's like I'm not complaining it's like nostalgic for me I I really appreciate kind of it like reminds me of um of her other books that I started reading when I was a young kid and all of that so it's like I so I really enjoyed it I, I enjoyed that about it it's just so funny to me how uh she sticks so closely to the same formula but anyway this was really good and it's a really good like magical a magical school book as well if you're looking for that punk rock karaoke um this basically follows a band and they've been in this band since high school but now that they're they've graduated things are just not quite the same they have things like jobs and um family responsibilities and might be going to college soon all that stuff um and so stuff is just not quite the same in terms of um like what they're doing and uh it is really really good and really relatable <laughs> Solace by Paula Mendoza and Abby Sher. Uh, this is the follow-up to Sanctuary. Um, I was not sure we were going to get a sequel to this. I didn't know. Um, but anyway, um, this arc was sent to me by Penguin Teen. So thank you so much, Penguin Teen, for sending this my way. Um, so uh, while our first book kind of followed the... Um, basically kind of like what an undocumented immigrant might actually go through, but with a dystopian bent to it. Uh, this was like full on dystopian and it was very different um, from what I kind of expected. So ultimately this was not as good as the first book because of that, but um, the but I'm really glad that we had this um, because it was really interesting um, and it's really nice to have an actual resolution because of course the first book ended in such a a way that I thought that's what we were going that's all we were going to get um, so I was a little bit worried and sad but um, that was also kind of what the reality of the situation would be like more uh, but basically in this book we follow actually um, four point of view characters we have our main character from the first book Valley who is now uh, working with a with an organization that's trying to um, break people out of the labor camp that we see in the first book and then we have we follow three people uh, who are in the labor camp, one of whom is her mom. Um, and then there are two other people who are there for different reasons. And it kind of follows both of their, you know, all their stories. And um, so I really, really enjoyed this. It was really, really sad and just upsetting and uh, definitely not a happy story. But ultimately, it does have a, you know, a resolution at the end, which is good. So I really enjoyed this book. And it comes out on October 8th. The Breakup Tour by Emily Wibberly and Austin Sigmund Broca. This follows a famous singer who released an album that where each song is about one of her exes and the hit song off of it is thought to be about her husband, her husband or her ex-husband and he um, is basically saying that it's about him and all of that. Um, so she goes to find her ex-boyfriend who is the actual uh, inspiration for that song and ask him to come forward uh, as the person who the song is really about. Out. Um, and he says that, that he'll do that, but only if if she takes him on tour with her as the keyboard player. So uh, so she does. And anyway, so this was a really adorable second chance romance. Um, I really liked it. Um, and it definitely was pretty, you know, it was pretty good um, as far as being like a music industry um, type of thing, too, because I I've been like wanting more um uh, more music industry related romance books and they're surprisingly hard to find and it was kind of cool to find one by authors that I had read something by before. Night Render by Jody Meadows. This is about a uh, a prince who has to save uh, a princess but then uh, so he calls upon this 
um, this person creature thing called Night Render to uh, help him with that. And then uh, the princess turns out to really uh, be, uh, she kind of has her own agenda. She's not a very good person at all. She's basically a villain and he falls in love with Night Render instead. Um, so this was a really good book. I really liked it. Um, I did feel like um, there, I just wanted more world building out of it and just more development of the story overall. But I did think it was really good and really weird and different too. Uh, so anyway, those are the books that I read in the first half of May. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these, have any thoughts on them, etc, etc. And I will see you very soon with a new video. Bye!